All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about that upcoming snowstorm alongside multiple other snowfall threats along the Eastern United States and some even in the Western United States as well. Now, before I get into this video, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming February is going to go? Because we actually are rapidly approaching February. Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current radar imagery, of course. And we have a storm up here in the northwestern United States that's definitely worth talking about. It's bringing some snowfall out there to the... Uh, kind of inland regions of Washington and then also some northwestern areas of Montana and Idaho, but mostly rainfall there along uh, that seaboard there of Washington State. We also have some snowfall coming down for regions of Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and Kansas, as well as portions of Colorado. Uh, that's quite interesting as well. And then we have this huge cold front developing right here. Uh, that is going to bring some snowfall pretty much to a very vast majority of people actually in this region at some point. Uh, it's going to kind of creep its way down. It's going to be pretty brief and pretty minor, but it will be kind of rapidly switching over from rain to snow for these regions. You can already see snowfall on kind of the uh, western extent of this cold front as of right now. Kentucky, West Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania are really getting it right now. And eventually this will even move down, like I said, into some of these more southeastern regions. Uh, becoming more and more brief the further southeast you go, uh, but it will be bringing snowfall to uh, a, a multitude of different folks. We do have some thunderstorm activity down here in the deep south. It's also probably worth noting with this strong cold front coming through. Uh, regardless of rain or snow, we are seeing heavier precipitation along pretty much the entire uh, cold front here. It's a very strong cold front. And what's lying behind it is extremely cold air that is blasting down into the United States here. Uh, and you're going to feel that. Uh, that's what's going to make tomorrow's storm possible, which is looking a little more minor, by the way. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, but it's just going to be absolutely frigid, even for the southern mid-Atlantic and northern regions of the southeast coast here. Uh, it, it's going to be definitely cold enough for snow. It's really can we get that precipitation up there uh, is the biggest concern at this point. We're going to go over all of that, like I said, in a little while. Let's just zoom into some of these regions real quickly. Let's move up into the northwest. We do have, again, like I said, snow snowfall going on out here for the uh, eastern regions of Washington and then the northwestern regions of Montana and the northern regions of Idaho here. So some snowfall coming down for these ranges in here. Uh, and then we have a lot of rainfall, even for the Cascades here, quite interesting. We must have some above normal temperatures out there, uh, but we're seeing some pretty moderate to heavy rainfall come down for regions, especially in Washington, but the very far northwestern regions of Oregon are also seeing some of that rainfall also. Uh, now, as we move down to the snow regions down here, some rain and snow, there is some snow, or sorry, some rainfall mostly here near the Mexico border here in Texas. Um, we are seeing mostly rainfall, but also some snowfall in there. A majority of the snowfall is actually up in this region, uh, kind of near Amarillo, uh, just to the west of Oklahoma City, south of Garden City there in uh, Kansas, and also um, near Albuquerque. Mostly down there to the southeast of Albuquerque, we are seeing some snowfall go on, but mostly around Amarillo and areas to the north is where the heaviest extent of that has been, uh, which is pretty uh Pretty interesting if you ask me. Now the thunderstorm activity, I'm guessing along that very, very front of the cold front there, as you can see, those oranges and reds developing, that is likely the worst of the thunderstorm activity coming through. Uh, probably quite windy, maybe some thunder. The further south you go, the higher chance of thunder, obviously. Uh, obviously areas up here probably are not seeing thunder, but if you go very far south here uh, in this extent of the storm, it's probably in the form of some thunderstorms. And also, this is probably where the most rainfall is coming down as well, uh, with a lot of those yellows and oranges. And there's a lot of it, even once this you know initial front passes by, you can see there's plenty of dark greens and yellows behind it, which is indicating to me uh, that obviously there's a lot of precipitation with this front down there especially. Now, down here for the Mid-Atlantic, we are seeing that snowfall, like I said, uh, Mid-Atlantic and some of the Ohio Valley actually here. We're seeing quite a bit of that snowfall come down for these regions. This front has really turned much more snowy over the past 24 hours of model guidance. Uh, we've seen 
the models extend that snowfall time frame more and more and more, even for these areas down here that it's eventually going to move down to. Uh, it's extended, you know, by multiple hours how long we're going to see snowfall with this initial front. And I'm not going to be surprised if I hear some reports of two to four inches of snowfall coming down uh, with this front from multiple folks. So like I said, right now it's snowfall here. Later this evening, it's going to be snowfall here. Um, and it's going to be rainfall on the front. So you're going to have to deal with that initial melting because of the wet ground. But it should pretty quickly cool down the air once precipitation starts to fall. Now, up here in the northeastern United States, we do have some snowfall coming down on the, the kind of western, northwestern extent of this cold front. Basically, from northeastern uh, Pennsylvania uh, through kind of these regions of New York there near the Catskills, uh, regions of uh, Massachusetts, southern Vermont, southern New Hampshire, and then the coastal regions of Maine are all kind of seeing some snowfall come down. Outside of that, coastal southern New England and even through portions of the coastal mid-Atlantic there in, in New Jersey and New York here, uh, we're seeing some heavy rainfall in this corridor here uh, as well. And it's kind of training, which basically means that it's heading kind of along the cold front, not, you know, directly with where the cold front is headed. Uh, it's heading up the cold front, which extends the amount of time frame you're going to be seeing that precipitation. So you're just seeing more and more and more of it, um, which is leading towards obviously more precipitation eventually. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and finally take a look at that model guidance not only the snowstorm that's going to be happening, well, with the cold front today into tomorrow, and then that other snowstorm that's happening tomorrow into Saturday, but we're also going to talk about some other chances down the road. Now, today we're going to be using the GFS model because something this winter has been really weird. Uh, and actually, when you look back at every snowstorm that's happened in the eastern half of the country, the GFS has actually done better than the European model overall, which is something that cannot really be said about any other year in recent memory, at least since I've been paying attention. So we're going to be using the GFS today, actually. It's a little, little lower resolution, so we have to bear with it, but uh, we do see that that snowfall comes through in the eastern United States. Again, it heads further and further south here, um, and we see this kind of expand out here as well in the northwest. We're seeing some snowfall for Washington, Montana, and Idaho still. Um, let's zoom into the east for just a second. I promise we'll get back to the west. I see you guys commenting about that. Uh, I want to talk about this real quickly. That moves further and further south. We see the snowfall extent is here. I think it's a little bit overdoing the sleet in here. Maybe not, though. Um, but I think that since it's a lower resolution model, it's kind of making that area a little bit bigger than it will be. That eventually moves out. That eventually moves out, obviously. Total snowfall with that one. Uh, Kutra here. Uh, a little bit less here on the southern side of the extent because of that sleet, according to this model. But really, two to four inches of snowfall in this region Super interesting. Um, so you guys will likely get left out, possibly, of that snowstorm that's going to be happening Friday night into Saturday. But definitely not the frontal one here. I mean, we are taking a look at quite a bit of snowfall potentially for you guys. Now, the, this, the actual snowstorm moves up. And this is actually trended north on the GFS. The GFS had gone south with it. We're seeing a little bit of a northwest trend. And I mean, as of yesterday, the models really took this storm away for the most part. Uh, and I'm going to show you the snowfall map in a minute, but they are kind of coming back with it. So today is going to be kind of a nail biter because they can really come back with this one, uh, which is going to be interesting. But in general, overall, uh, with this snowstorm, we have to kind of exclude these amounts up here, a lot of these amounts up here, because most of that is coming with that frontal boundary. So you have to kind of imagine that that's not there with this next snowstorm. It's mostly these areas that had pretty much nothing with the first one. So we know this is all coming from our snowstorm that's happening Friday into Saturday. So generally, four to five to maybe six inches is now the bullseye for that storm. But again, if it trends north just a tiny bit, we're going to start moving up in those amounts really quickly again. But the clock is ticking. As much as I want that to happen for my area, the clock is ticking. Now, let's first off, let's take a look at some other models. European still shows a lot. The European does still show a lot here. Uh, we do see that there is still 6 uh, to 10 inches in this pink, maybe even 10 inches plus there. Or, sorry, 6 to 10 in the purples, still maybe 10 inches plus in the pink. I think at this point, uh, the consensus is that that, that is really kind of overdoing it. The Canadian model is on the same page, but again, GFS model has been doing better, and look at it. It's showing a lot less. I've never seen, you know, within... 
basically 36 hours of a storm really being underway and almost done for the most part, this much disagreement here. And then we take a look at our short range models. RGEM showing like 10 inches plus. NAM model showing basically zilch. I mean, we, we take a look here and this, is, this isn't this is even from the storm. Uh, this is actually mostly from that funnel boundary that comes through. Uh, wild stuff. This shows maybe one to three inches, maybe some three inches plus in here. Uh, right in there. So huge disagreement. I mean, there could be a dusting to three inches for a lot of these regions, or there could be like six to 10 or even more inches of snow. And we are within a day of this snowstorm starting. I mean, this is absolutely wild. And the next time you complain about a weather forecast, just think about this. I mean, look at this. A dusting to maybe one or two inches. And then we have our RGEM model over here showing 10 inches plus, And we're so close to the storm happening. This is a true boomer bust system, and that's all I have to say about it. I don't really have an opinion on what's going to happen, because it can really swing either way. I can't even tell you. It, just prepare for either. Prepare for either. It's, it's that tough of a situation. Now let's go back to our GFS model. Let's go back to precipitation type, and let's zoom out like I promised and take a look at the entire United States. Let's backtrack a little bit. So we see this system up here. It really spills into these north central regions of the United States. We'll, we'll play this through again and watch it happen. So we do get some snowfall through a lot of these regions uh, later in the day on Saturday. So this is Friday into Saturday. Again, here's our snowstorm. The GFS has actually shown it. Let me show you what it was showing. Uh, 0Z, you see how much further south it is. It trended north there on the 6Z. 18Z, it was almost gone. So we have seen a north trend here on the 6Z. So I am curious what will happen on the 12Z. Uh, later today there is some opportunity for this to make a little bit of a comeback now we're seeing a lot of snowfall spill into these northern regions by early next week this is monday january 24th and we are seeing some clipper systems pour through especially for this region but we are seeing some of those make their way into this eastern extent as well the jet stream is going to kind of stick to looking like this mostly so it is allowing for that opportunity of snowfall now this is an interesting frame because we're seeing a lot of this northern energy moving like this bringing some snowfall and clearly there's a bit of southern energy trying to meet up with it. We see the rainfall uh, basically from the Pacific here all the way up into the uh, southern United States. So you can tell where the northern and the southern jet are at this point. And they kind of mix in like this and head this way. Uh, let's watch this play out. So we kind of see a combination there. Again, northern jet comes through, southern jet comes through, and then we get something happening here around the early to middle portion of next week. I am watching for this. That is interesting with the southern jet that brings a lot of the precipitation and then the northern jet that brings a lot of the cold all combining for something potentially in here that we are watching very closely. Uh, and that really leads towards a very cold pattern again in the east like this with the jet stream. And we're seeing these systems move down. But what's happening is the the jet stream is heading out like this it's not heading up the coast it's almost too cold uh so we're seeing you see that storm down there boop moves right out the sea so you see it it's not um it's not getting that pull up the coast watch which arrow it goes with clearly it's going with that more southern arrow then so that first bit of energy goes that way but watch what happens with the jet stream we see this right here it's kind of this tilt is happening like this. It's kind of going in a uh, counterclockwise motion. So what's going to end up happening is it's going to all spin around. And then we get a little bit more of a sharp turn here in this jet stream. You see how it's getting this little bit of a up? Watch these blue and red lines. That's what I'm talking about. You see how it gets kind of a, a vertical uh, axis to it there? That is what's allowing for this storm that's showing up on the model to actually appear. This is 240 hours out. This is nine to 10 days out. So take this with a grain of salt. Let me tell you, take that with a grain of salt, but that's next Sunday. This model does have something coming together, but look, these models have been switching so much within one or two days of the storm. Again, they're disagreeing on tomorrow's storm today. So we need to definitely take a nine to 10 day outlook with a, a grain of salt for sure. I mean, if we have to take a one day outlook with a grain of salt, uh, but the the important thing is that it's showing storminess. It's showing snowstorms. 
at times. And then we get into like the super fantasy range here where there's just nothing to even really take away from it. But it does show some signals that some storms moving through. Again, uh, so we have our cold front, one. Storm tomorrow, two. Then the jet stream kind of comes together, three. That storm that misses to the south right there, you see it down here. That's four storms. This one doesn't come together, but the models can change. This is 200 hours out. It could get more of a pull up the coast. We'll have to watch for that. And then we get one that does come up the coast. That's five. So within the next uh, 10 days or so, we have five potential storms that we need to be watching for. So it is going to be an active pattern. And this this really bombs out. You know, these storms, they've been showing them bomb out from like a thousand, uh, you know, about 1,010 millibars all the way down to the 980s and the 970s. You guys have been wondering why I show bomb cyclone in the uh, thumbnail at times. It's because these really do bomb out and become bomb cyclones. They're going from, you know, uh, 1,004 millibars, even less by this point, about 1,012 millibars, all the way down to like 982 millibars. So that is truly a system that is bombing out. And these models have been consistently showing these very strong low pressure systems move through. Uh, at times. Now, the interesting thing out west is for the near future, we get in a very active pattern, especially in this yellow circle as you watch this play out. So, this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we get a system to move through into Monday, uh, and that even lingers into the middle of the week. But then look, then we get into a super quiet pattern for quite a while, all the way, I would say, about Wednesday, all the way Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, and then things start moving through again by the time we're reaching February 1st. So the very end of January into February 1st, this model changes things around and gets back into an active pattern. That's the look out west. Anyway, mostly today we focused on the storm that's actually happening today and tomorrow, obviously. For today's confidence tab, I told you guys I was thinking about moving up to a 5 out of 6, but how can I do that when the models are completely disagreeing in such a huge way? So we're staying at a 4 out of 6, even though the storm's happening today and tomorrow. Uh, there's just no improvement of confidence. And actually, since yesterday morning, I could have moved down to a three out of four or three out of six because things have actually, you know, I showed yesterday how much agreement we had and that agreement kind of just fizzled away, which is something you don't usually see. Usually you see them get into agreement and then that's it. It kind of locks in. But this time we saw the agreement come in and then the agreement go away. And now it's, I mean, more disagreement than we even saw when the storm was five days out. So really Crazy stuff going on here, guys, to say the least. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how much snowfall do you think is the maximum? And James Marsh said, I believe 10 inches is the maximum amount of snow for coastal Virginia and North Carolina. And wouldn't be surprised to see a few isolated spots exceed a foot. Uh, and if the European, the Canadian model are correct, that would be the look. But if the GFS model and the NAM models are correct, yeah, I mean, you're dreaming, obviously. So James Marsh clearly um, going with more of the European for sure there. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Letter the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Darna Carnes as well. I would also thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kotalasa, Catbite, Charleston, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Quilisi also. I would also thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Finn, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.